In this workshop, we're going to learn how to set up eyes on the journey. Welcome. My name is Julie Brody. I'm the director of measurement for brands like measurementmarketing.io, Data Driven You, and Measure Summit. I've been building actionable dashboards for a really long time and eventually became a measurement marketer just like you and eventually started teaching. We, as myself and our amazing team of instructors, actually still have clients, what we call our dedicated measurement management clients. And I say that just so you know that myself and our instructors have lots and lots of different experience in different platforms. So if you have a question, maybe not about this particular topic, but you have a question about something else, feel free to reach out to us. We always love a good puzzle to solve and we always love helping you get unstuck and keep making progress. So reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. And as we go through this particular workshop, remember the one thing rule. That means you're going to hear a lot of cool things today. Just get one thing that you can take and apply and start mastering and using that and then come back and get something else the next time. Don't overwhelm yourself. So think of the one thing. So let's go ahead and get started with how to set up eyes on the journey. Before we find out exactly what in the world we're talking about with eyes on the journey, which is actually this little chart right here. Uh, we're going to talk about the strategy behind all things measurement to get to the point where we need this tool. So with all things measurement, we have this framework where everyone is going through and they should be going through whether they know it or not. Everyone starts out marketing in the blind. They are throwing spaghetti against the wall, hoping something sticks. They don't know what's working. They don't know what ads to turn on. They don't know what wants to turn off. They don't know what traffic's working and all this. And they want to be able to know what button to push, what lever to pull, what thing to do to grow the profits. That's what they want to do. And to do that, you have to go through the three steps, plan, build, and launch. In your plan, you have to know what questions to ask and the information you need and the actions you're going to take. This is really, really important for this particular workshop as we're going to talk about eyes on the journey, or uh, you'll hear me abbreviate IOJ. And so the questions, information, and action is foundational to all things measurement. If you're not doing this step, the, please go and find the free course that we have out there, um, the measure marketing framework. You can get access to it. Um, just and there's all kind of other workshops on our channel. Um, just go get the course and watch it so you can understand this, because if you're not doing this, you're really hurting yourselves in the long run. So then after you have your actions, you're going to go to your build where you understand your results, traffic and story. And then you get to go to the fun part of launch, which is listen, forecast and optimize. We are going to be going through all of this in this particular workshop. And some of it's going to be really, really apparent and some of it's just going to be not as apparent. And this is all part of the measurement marketing framework. Again, all of us should be doing this constantly. And but sometimes we don't quite realize that's what we're doing when we're going through and building um, or we get really stuck and frustrated. And it's because we're skipping things. Usually this bottom step here, the plan, the questions, information and action. So let's go ahead and figure out what is eyes on the journey or as we like to abbreviate i o j it is an easy measurement strategy to optimize any step in a user journey so let's go ahead and take a look at kind of what a i o j report would look like this is the report that you might have seen on our sales page or in different um uh, presentations and this is one of our what we call our academy funnels and so most of us are used to seeing something like this where we have an offer page we have going to the cart and we have some sort of purchase we are used to seeing something very very similar to this and then what we can see is that we have a conversion rate here and we have a conversion rate here and then we have an overall conversion rate here. And so we we're used to seeing that. And some of us may start out with just having an overall, like you don't have this in, t in the middle step. Um, and if you're familiar with our act model, a C T, you might have that already set up where this is your ask this is your consider, and this is your transact. We have other workshops and, uh, resources out there about that particular thing. But if you already have that piece set up, then this will be a little bit easier for you to kind of think through. Um, but usually when you want to implement something like our eyes on the journey, this beautiful thing over here, it is because you're like, well, my user journey is performing 
and the overall is kind of in that realm of where it should be because it's you know it's green we're saying one to three percent um and the people who are getting to the cart are you know hot to buy because this actual conversion rate is actually a little bit too high um meaning what's what we should be thinking is we need more people to go through this um, and this will even itself out because right now it's like only the people that are coming here are coming to buy, which seems weird. So we would expect to be 30 to 40 percent um, if it was and eventually maybe the trend is 40 to 50. But for cold traffic, we would expect 30 to 40. Um, so why aren't we getting enough people to go to the cart? So this is where our right now our optimization is telling us the whole when we implemented or act act ask consider transact that's what this is telling us here is there's something going on on this offer page that's not getting them to do this step and that is how we came up with eyes on the journey because we wanted to know well you know what were they doing in between um and so and we'll go through the ex exact steps of how to figure out your strategy. But the gist is how many users started the journey and how many users did the action to complete the step. And in this case, it is clicking to go to the cart. How many users clicked to go to the cart? And then did they interact with the page as expected on the way through the journey? Um, so usually the first step and the last step are really, really easy to figure out. The second step is pretty easy as well because you want to know, do they leave right away? And then you go through and kind of figure out what else could you measure, depending on your skill set and your tech and everything like that. What else can you measure along the way that's a reliable signal that you can say they are continuing on the journey? And the reason you would want that is so you can go to your ads person. Let's say this number actually was 72. And so if you can see here from our legend that says 10 seconds on page and let's say we're running Facebook ads and it says 72, I would be able to go to, hey, Facebook ads person, you know, what is it that we're, you know, our headline is or what are we telling people to go to that page and do? And maybe there's a disconnect between the message and what the headline of the page is. Um, and so this is let's go into our academy page here. And so if we had something completely irrelevant um, uh, above the fold from what the ad is saying, then that would make sense why this number hypothetically would be 72 instead of 92. Um, that's what we call our expectation engine as saying, like, are we you know, are they feel like do they feel like they're in the completely wrong spot? Um, and so that way, right away, we would know, you know, none of this other stuff matters if they're not even hanging around the page uh, like they are expected to. Um, and then going on through, as again, we said that it's just, are they continuing on in the journey as we would want them to? Um, and are they getting to certain key points? Like, do they even see the call to action? Um, are they playing the video? Are they scrolling? Are they, you know, and all of those things. So let's go through and look at another way of kind of strategizing this. And so we're in our handy dandy, amazing Lucid chart, you know, our fun tool. And we have a couple of columns here and our eyes on the journey step. We have impression, introduce, interested, investigated and initiated. So first rule is even though we are calling it eyes on the journey, and we at measurementmarketing.io are using all I words. You do not have to. There are plenty of our students that choose to do something else. Like maybe they do impression introduced or a, and, and, or they throw aware in there somewhere um, or they throw whatever word that they want to use. And that is OK. We're just going to keep it with all the different I words. And, uh, and, you know, a lot of our students do as well. That is OK. Um, and sometimes our students will number them with I1, I2, I3, just to keep it straight. And I'll kind of explain that a little bit more when we get to the tag manager portion. So let's go through in the second column is talking about what questions do you have about this user, the, about the step in this user journey? Like, are, did they even start would be a great one to ask. Do they even start the user journey at the step? Kind of going back to our dashboard and this impression we could see here like hey they viewed the page that is something super simple that basically every measurement system would be able to have is some sort of page view um, and we're going to look at this third column which is examples of how you can measure 
Um, this is not of an exhaustive list. You can definitely have a lot more. This is just examples of things that we've seen in the past that work really well. So one could be a page view. Another one could be a timer for one second or two seconds or something like that. Whatever makes sense for your user journey. And remember, this always goes back to the measurement marketing framework about what questions you have, the information you need, which is how you're going to be able to measure it um, and the, the information you're going to get from measuring it um, and the actions you're going to take. If however you decide to measure it, if you can't really take action on it, then you probably need to kind of rethink the strategy. So let's continue learning and that'll make more sense as we go through introduced uh, we will come back to in just a moment because remember we said the first step and last step are the easiest to figure out so the first step do they start the journey and the last step i'm sure you can figure out is do they complete this step of the user journey meaning do they take the next step and so for thinking through and you're like okay well this is a sales page so the thing that would mean that they did the thing we wanted to would be if they purchased and that was where you're incorrect because remember this is the step we are measuring only the offer page. We're not measuring. Did they buy? No, we're trying to figure out why the heck is this sales page not working the way we would want it to. So we come over here and I'm going to scroll all the way down and do 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 do. Hello, long page. What I want to know is do they click to go to the cart? Do they, you know, so it's not going to the cart. Do they click to go to the cart? in this case um, and the reason uh, that we don't want to measure the next page is for when you're doing stuff on reports and stuff it's a whole lot easier if everything is on the same url just the way ga4 is built um, so it is best if all five steps are on the same url if you're going into different urls then you just might as well use the act model um, you know where you ask consider and transact and you can have multiple consider steps so if you're going through multiple uh, multiple urls use the act model um, and then if you're using it in one page and you want to know about one single step use eyes on the journey so we have again initiated where they complete the step of the user journey and then how you can measure that is do they click to the next step or element visibility like if the uh if it was an opt-in type step and they have had to fill out a form or something and it was just a uh, like thank you for completing this form we'll be in touch shortly or something like that it could be an element visibility of that um, and obviously there can be other more complicated measurements where it's like hey there's a data layer push and some sort of signal that way um, but it all depends on your tech and what you have available to you so whatever is the signal that you can use that said they completed the journey so we know our first step we know our last step. Now we circle back and go to the second step. And this is what we said. Do they leave right away? Is the expectation engine intact? You know, are they uh, do they seem like they're in the wrong spot? And we can go through and measure that with a very simple timer and depending on the page and uh, what kind of what your page is doing, you maybe it's a five second timer. Um, and maybe it's a 20 second timer. I, I honestly wouldn't go more than 10 seconds for this thing, especially if you're running ads, um, because you would want to know right away, are your ads landing on that? Like is the headline of the ad and the copy of the ad, the image of the ad and all the things of the ad matching with the headline in and above the fold of the page and anything more than 10 seconds, I think would be harder to answer that question. Again, going back to our framework, what questions do we have? The question is, is, is the expectation engine being met? Like, are we doing that correctly? And uh, if you have that time too long, it'd be hard to do that. Um, and that's where we get, are we able to take action? And we can't take action if this timer is too long. So I would say no more than 10 seconds, uh, but you can definitely go a little bit shorter if that makes sense for you. Then we continue on and go on to our third one, which is interested. And so this is, do they interact with the page? And ways to do that is a couple of different ways. Um, actually, technically, it's a lot of different ways um, and a lot of different variations. So you can do just a timer. Like it, everyone has time, uh, especially if you're using Google Tag Manager, you can do all kind of different timers in there. 
So it could be if you're doing 10 seconds here, you could do 20 seconds here. Uh, you in, Or if you want to do 30 seconds. Or if it's like a blog or something, maybe you do 50% scroll. Or maybe you do timer and scroll where there's 30 seconds and 50% scroll. And this would be a trigger group in Google Tag Manager. Um, or you could do, if it's a video, do they play the video? Do they watch 25%? Do they, you know, all these different ways to interact with the page. Now, investigated could be just a continuation of interested. Do they continue to interact with the page depending on your tech, depending on your skills in Google Tag Manager, depending on what you have available to you? Perhaps just the easiest way is just to continue on the timer. That might be your what we call good enough to get going, uh, meaning that's the first thing you do. And then you can come back and, you know, see, is that useful? Are you able to take action on it? Or maybe you need something a little bit different. Like, are they viewing the call to action? Do they come down here and actually look at this or not? Do they look at it for a few seconds or not? Um, are they interacting with the form? Like, do they start typing in their name or do they click into the form? Any of that stuff, if that's on the page, do they finish the video? Do they get to 90% or whatever measurement that you have already that you can use? Are they doing those things? Are they continuing on in their journey? That would be probably relatively close to before they would click. Not too close, but something like if you're filling out the form, we don't need a terminator. Um, if they're filling out the form and maybe there's four or five fields, but if they started the form, but they didn't get to the next one, then you would know, okay, something's going on to the form. Maybe there's, you know, 15 fields and, you know, like let's simplify the form. Um, or maybe you find out, um, coming back to our pretty image here, and you could see that we have forecast and that's letting us know kind of what's going on on the page and where we should be. And so we can see, because we know this number over here and this over here, we know that not enough people are coming down and clicking or initiating. They're not going to that initiated step. And so we could kind of backtrack and be like, well, we would expect about 30% to get to 30 to 40 to actually get to this viewing of the call to action four or five seconds. And so we're not doing that, um, but let's go up to the next step to see, are we meeting that goal? And this is saying that uh, people that are on the page for 45 seconds and they scroll halfway. All right, I am gonna get to the point where we're scrolling halfway. Do, 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 do. So I would say it's probably around here. They're scrolling halfway, they're getting to about here, but they also have to spend 45 seconds on the page. Okay, I'm just kind of thinking through that as a user, and this is where we're missing the mark. We're not getting that there either, but the one before that we are. So what is going on is that between 10 seconds and 45 seconds, we are losing people um, or they're not scrolling down in that 45 seconds. So there's something going on here. What this would tell us in this scenario is we would go to the copy team. Honestly, what I would do is go to Microsoft Clarity and s confirm that, hey, that's what it's showing too. I would see, are they clicking in other places? Are they, you know, are we having a ton of members go here and log in? Is that skewing our results? Are they coming up here and choosing other options? Um, what's going on? Are they not looking at certain things? If there's videos on here, are they not playing the videos or are they getting distracted by the videos? What's going on with all of that? But what this is telling me, what our eyes on the journey is telling us is that something is going on between this these two steps and that allows us to go to our copy team and our design team and say we need to make adjustments here and that would save us this is going to save us a lot of time this is why it's going to save you so much time is because we're not going to mess around with the headline because we know that's not the problem we are not going to mess around with the pricing table or whatever is here by the call to action that is not the problem the problem is with it after 10 seconds and before 45 seconds, they're not continuing on in the user journey. And that's where, again, we bring our copy and our design team and say, let's improve this page. And they don't have to worry about certain parts of the page they don't need to mess with because we know those are working. And so that's how 
eyes on the journey can save you lots of time and really be super efficient to see the different changes you're making, especially if you're a copywriter um, or someone in design or you just wanting to show your client that your optimization tips are actually improving and are useful. If you're doing any sort of split testing, um, this is incredibly useful so that you know exactly where on the page you probably should be doing a split test to help improve and uh, increase optimizations and conversions. So now that we kind of see all this and now that we have all of our strategy, it's time we go on to our build of eyes on the journey. And to do that, we are going to go to our handy dandy Google Tag Manager. So. We've already had this created, and I actually do have a tool for you, um, don't worry, a, a container that you can import um, and use. But I just want to show you real quick how we set this up inside of Google Tag Manager. So we have our great naming convention here, um, and it's the same thing as our event name here. Just to keep it super simple, they line up one to one. Um, so it depends on how you really want your names to be. If you like having exactly what we have here, you can definitely do that. So it says IOJ underscore I1 underscore impression. A lot of our students, uh, this was the way that we used to teach it was I1 underscore impression. And that was really useful for them. Uh, we just put the underscore IOJ in there. So um, that way it was easy for people to remember it was from eyes on the journey because uh, we saw a little bit of confusion there. So if you like that, um, I do recommend not having it. I'm going to actually copy this whole thing. Uh, I do recommend not having just the I word. Um, this was actually the very, very, very first way we taught it. And we saw there was a lot of confusion about knowing which one came next. And so that's where we saw, let's get that fixed, where the I won. Thank you, Natasha was the amazing person that came up with that. So our, our, even our members are the ones that come help us improve our skills and improve what we teach you. Um, and so we have that. And so again, IOJ. So that way, when you're inside of your Google Analytics, all of your IOJ stuff can be right together um, with that as well. So we have our IOJ impression and then you just add whatever trigger you have in here. And so in this case, my trigger is also specified on a very particular page right here. Um, and so a lot of times when you're starting out with using eyes on the journey, you will have it for a very, very particular page or a group of pages or something like that. Um, and I will show you here in just a moment how you can do that for um, uh, across your site and that it might be what you eventually grow into. Um, but that is how you can just, you know, have a timer um, and you go through with that. So let's go ahead and want to discard the changes because we don't need to change anything. And then for our second one, introduce, we have the exact same thing, but we have one additional piece which says, make sure that I1 impression fires before I2. Now, in this case, because we have one second, 10 seconds, obviously one second is going to happen before 10 seconds. But what if this one was something else like a scroll? Um, then you would want to make sure that this one before it would happen before the second one. So that way, our amazing pretty report would not look like an hourglass. I'm going to bring this one back. And so that way, this number or this number or any of these other numbers could be higher than the one above. It would look like an hourglass and it would be really hard to take action. Remember, our dashboards need to give us action, lead us to very quick, natural action. And in order to do that, we want this to look like a, a actual funnel. And you're like, well, why do you do that? Why do we want to make sure it looks like a funnel? Um, and the reason is, in kind of fast forwarding through, let's say um, someone is interested and in, actually, let's go all the way down to our i5. They click and they, so this is just a, they click on a certain, t uh, the click URL contains this and they're on that particular page. That's what this is. Um, and so if they click on this, um, and they did it, let's say before 10 seconds, they did it at eight seconds. Then our theory is that somewhere along the way they investigated, they were interested and they were introduced 
perhaps this particular person just did it really, really fast. Maybe it was on different sessions or something else. But for the sake of our user journey in the purposes of the report, they did all these things. They just did them in a different time frame as these. Maybe they did it faster. And again, if they've clicked, they've already investigated, they've already, inter they've already been interested, they've already introduced, they already have an impression. Now, if you're asking a different question, like if they click, do they watch the video? Those are different questions and you can answer those in different ways, uh, particularly inside of GA4 in the exploration reports and building a funnel exploration there, do, you know, saying they play the video, they go to the next step, or do they not play the video, they go to the next step. You can do that here, but for the purposes of the eyes on the journey, you don't want to do, you don't have to go that crazy route. So just keep it very easy and simple going through your logic you just learned about and the strategy. Um, through there. So again, we're going to continue on with looking at our different triggers. And so this one is just a simple 30 second timer for a particular page. And if you want to see the tag again, we're saying the event name is this. And again, for I three, you need to make sure I two fires. And then I four, we need to make sure I three fires. And then if you just kind of play in a game, what do we need to make sure fires before I five, even though the trigger is different. And if you said I four, then you are correct. And there we go. And that is the simple build inside of Google Tag Manager. If we wanted to start from scratch, we would just go through the exact same steps we usually do for a Google Analytics for event, put in our measurement ID here. We happen to have that as a variable here. Do, do do that thing and then we would just go through and type in our name so let's say let's say i wanted to do i six um then we would go through and name all that i don't have an i six but maybe you will there you go discard um i will caution you with going more than five um, because of your reporting might not allow you to show a pretty little user journey i want to bring that back. They might not allow you to report it in this particular way. There are other tools that allow you to do that if you're but if you're wanting to use that one, you have to stick with five. All right, so now you know how to build your stuff in Google Tag Manager. Um, and then what do we do inside of Looker Studio? So we have an, uh, an empty blank report, brand new one. And by default, uh, once I connected into Google Analytics 4, it chose event name and then it actually chose view. I changed this to sessions because that's a little bit more useful. If you wanted to match it to what Google shows, which is let's go back to our admin section and go to events. And so our events and our count. Um, if you want it to kind of correlate with that a little bit better, we can do that. So we have that event count and I like having this pulled up while I'm doing here. So that way I can know exactly how it is, um, the words come across, or I can also go into tag manager and grab that, uh, or analytics. But the way you're going to build this is, um, I like to build all these different parts and pieces. And sometimes I'll even keep this page and I'll hide it. And I'll show you what that looks like. Here we go. So we're going to have this very first one. Um, again, you could keep it at event count, but most of the time you're going to want to use sessions when you're measuring a user journey, just because that's usually the question you're asking is how many sessions um, did this? And that's going to allow you to um, slice and dice your information a lot better with source medium and all these other different things. So just without going into too much detail about how the data in GA4 uh, comes together, just no sessions is usually what you're going to want. Um, not views because you are really limited on scope and usually not total users um, because that's a, a different type of question. So again, just choose sessions and you'll be good to go. And then we choose at the bottom of here. So we're under setup and we're going to scroll down to the bottom and say add filter. And because we know we're looking for event name, we're going to type in the word event name. And then again, we know we're looking for I O J underscore one is what we're going to do contains. And this is where you could say I O J underscore I one. And honestly, we could just do I one. 
is what we could do. I1, and if you're learning this and you want to know what these different ones are, you can do I1 impression or whatever it is. So you can do that. But for the sake of this workshop, so it's not insanely long, I'm going to just keep it at I1 and I'm going to save. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to type that I1. And guess what? We're going to duplicate and we're going to go through this a little faster and you're going to see how quick you can do this. And then so now we have event name contains and I'm going to say I2 and I'm going to grab that I2 and save. And then I'm going to come up here, hit the pencil and then just replace that. All right, we have two and I know that our numbers don't quite match right here. So I'm going to go ahead and change this back to sessions because I want to correlate the data with this now, not Google Analytics. And so we're going to choose back to sessions. And this is where we can kind of see, yep, we're grabbing our filter is working. It's OK that we're using just I1, I2 and we're not breaking anything by not having the word impression or IOJ in there. So we're moving the I2 filter. And then we're going to create a new one and then we're going to go to event name and we're going to say contains and this is where we go to i3 i'm selecting that and copy paste and save and then we're going to come up here do do, do. there we are we have three done and it's only been a few minutes now i want to show you a different way to do this you can click on resources and choose manage filters we have these three we're going to choose to duplicate this one then we're going to edit and all we're going to do is change this to I4. I'm going to select all copy paste and save. And then it kind of kicks us out, which is fine. And then I'm going to copy and paste. And then I'm going to add a filter and choose this one. Now it says zero. I'm going to go ahead and finish renaming this one. Now I'm going to give you a second to troubleshoot. Why would it say zero? Our I4 should be this number here, but what's going on? And if you caught, I did not remove the I3 and that's what's going on here. We need to remove that one and it bounces back to what it should be. So that's a very, very common thing when we're playing around with filters that we accidentally leave one there and it causes an issue. So, uh, and that's not just an eyes on the journey thing. That is just a regular old Looker Studio thing you got to be careful of. And so I'm going to remove this one. And because it's so fast, we're just going to keep going. Event name contains, ta-da, and let's get rid of that. Do, do, there we go. And remember, we're going to rename it. Uh, we don't want them all to be the same name because the next step that we're going to do, they need to have different names. So if you didn't catch what I was doing is I just clicked on the pencil and I went through and just renamed that there. And that's really important. And if you don't know how to use Looker Studio, we have lots of workshops and courses and all the other things on how to use Looker Studio. This is just showing you how to use eyes on the journey with Looker Studio. All right. So now that we have all of our pieces and we know that the data kind of correlates with what we got going on over here with our event name and we have our date kind of to, to look at with this too, what the next step is that we can select all these and what we're going to do is right click and choose blend data. And then, so that's just, I'm going to put this one down here. It does not, we're not going to do anything with it right now. Uh, we're not going to, and we just have that there. The next thing that we do is we come in here, choose community visualizations. And if you like the pretty little chart that you normally see with eyes on the journey, it's this one right here. And it's metric funnel by power my analytics. And you have to allow them to do basically give them access to this. And inside our course, we teach you how to kind of use these community visualizations. So I'm not going to go into too many detail of the different style and all these other things, but so Right here, we see our data source is blended data one. Remember this one that we have here where we can see I one, two, three, four, five, it's blended data one. It is not teaching GA4 property. That's not what this one is. So if I come back over here, kind of hit that little pencil icon. And so it's blended data one, it's exactly what we would want. And so now we just choose our add our little metrics and keep going on. And until we have three, we can drag and drop. Sometimes I can be a little bit finicky if you're using a touchpad, um, but if you have a good mouse, that's pretty easy for you to do. And so there we go. Now we have our eyes on the journey right here.
and if you're kind of like, well, how do you do all these other stuff? Like, how do you do um, the emojis? And you're like, what emojis? What She had emojis? Yeah, we have little emojis in here. So how do we do all of that stuff? Well, that is our amazing team member, Sarah, that kind of created that for us. And I'll show you the handy dandy little trick on that one is you come in here and you right click and you do the little emoji and then you just figure out whatever emoji you want. And so it could be eyes. Well, I've spelled the word eyes. There we are. And there you go. That's all how you do the little emojis. I'm not going to save that because that's going to be going to a little bit too deep. But in case you were wondering how to customize that, um, that is how you would do that. All right. So another very common question we get is, well, what do you do if you want uh, eyes on the journey on multiple pages? How do you do that? So for the, to answer that one, I'm going to come back into um, one of our main account to kind of walk you through what we got going on. As you can see here, we have so many different things that we test uh, with. And what we have, I'm going to come through and show. Here we go. So what we have here is IOJ. So here's our impression. And our impression is basically window loaded in this case. And so you can come into all these. And so it's not the very first one. It's the, you know, after some other tags are firing in, but you can definitely do the same thing with page view. And so it's basically on every single page, we have an impression. Um, and then on every single page, for the most part, except certain membership pages, um, we will have an introduced and it's just a simple timer. Um, some older pages, we had a five second timer because they're really, really short. Um, but for the most page, it's just a, um, a 10 second timer on basically everything except certain membership pages. Then our third one, if you remember, is interested. And so this is where it could get kind of like, for the most part, they're all this, where it's 45 second timer and uh, scroll 50% and we're excluding certain pages um, again. Um, but then there's also some very special cases where it's, you know, hey, just scroll 50% on this one uh, or 10 seconds on this really, really short page. And so it's only gonna fire once because we've told it to only fire once per page. That's another important setting if you're doing something a little bit more advanced and have it on multiple pages uh, or different instances. So we've gone through impression, introduce, interest there's yeah interested um, and you notice that we have different logic for carts and so you can definitely do this on your cart as well and that's the reason why it's really important to have your urls uh, on there if you need to and then we go to our investigated and that's where we have all kind of different element visibility and different timers and different things that's going on there um, and then we have our final one which is uh, initiated here which again lots of different ways so every single page with the exception of certain membership pages have impression have introduced and have interested which in this case is that uh, scroll halfway in 45 seconds and the reason we chose to do that is because very quickly even if someone pops up a brand new sales page we would know if the expectation is being met which is a lot of times sometimes you will go to the page and they bounce right away or not necessarily bounce in the you know the actual term of bounce but they don't hang out for very long so in that, in that usually that allows us to take a lot of action and then as we level up our measurement then we will add in the other steps of um, in, well investigated and initiated um, if the funnel is going to stay around and the user journey is going to stay around when we first get started we first st you know kick off a user journey we start off with what we remember we said our act our ask consider and transact so we start off with knowing these three main steps or whatever the main steps of the user journey and we measure that for a little while and then when we need to when we are ready when we have a need for it we measure uh, the eyes on the journey and if you know you're going to need it if you know you are going to and need it you can definitely do it pretty close to right away as well um, if you have the skill set but I don't want anyone to get overwhelmed be like oh I can't measure my user journey without both pieces or anything no you can get a lot done with this 
and then you can level up into your eyes on the journey and you might adjust. You might realize, oh, five seconds is too long. We need it three seconds or 45 seconds is too long. We need it 30 seconds. You're going to adjust. The only thing I remember I said, I would highly encourage you not to do longer than 10 seconds on the introduced um, just because it's really, really useful to know if people are bouncing right away and leaving. And so that's how you can kind of do that for those different uh, instances. And so your next question is like, well, if you have eyes on the journey for multiple pages, what do you do in Looker Studio? Well, if we come back over here, what you can do, and I'm gonna go back to our resources and I'm going to manage our blends, which is this blended data one, I'm gonna to choose to duplicate it. And then I'm going to edit it and then I'm going to choose to add another filter and create a filter. And just because I know the way Google Analytics data comes through, I know the thing I'm looking for is page location. If you're not familiar with Google Analytics and the data, um, this might be a little bit too advanced for you, but don't worry, you can eventually level up with the different workshops and courses. I'm gonna go grab the little portion of the URL, or I can also go into one of my triggers if that's where it's at too. And I'm going to go and say when page, locati page location contains this, then I want it to uh, filter. And so in this case, I'm going to say Academy offer page. Um, and then I'm going to save. And I need to add that filter to all of these. Now you're probably wondering, why don't I just say it's this and the page location? Well, I'm going to give you a pro tip because maybe you're going to have another offer page and you want to be able to keep your filters nice and clean. So now we have, we're gonna save this, I'm gonna close, and then I can choose this other copy of blended data. And so now it's gonna do its thing. And so this is only for the Academy offer page. And technically I can say, going to change this A C A D E M Y I O J and so I can save that there and then I might have to refresh the page I can refresh it here and this would eventually change its name so then let's say we have a new offer page come through guess what we would have to do you know just copy that one go through add a new filter add another filter that was for the new offer page and there we go that makes it so much easier to go through and build a very quick eyes on the journey for the new offer page instead of having to rebuild five more triggers for ioj for you know second sales page ioj2 for the second sales page and so this just take our word for it it's going to make it a whole lot more efficient for your filters for that. And so that is how you build your eyes on the journey uh, from strategy to build. And now you're probably like, well, this is a little bit too much. Is there an easier way? And yes, there actually is an easier way. We have a uh, tool uh, that we call a get it done guide for our members of the Academy. Um, and this is what the end result is. And so you'll be able to use a container that will import it into Google Tag Manager. You just adjust a few little things, tell it where you want it to fire. And then after you have some data, you'll have a report just like this, where you can see where it's coming from and all the way through with that and kind of compare those tools or compare the different date ranges and stuff. And the way you would get that again, if you are already an Academy member, you can go to your toolbox um, in here and then you're going to see a section with get it done guides and you could see um, that again it's for the academy membership level and then you have your eyes on the journey guide here and you'll be able to go through those steps um, if you want to have that template otherwise you learned all the things that you needed to do to build that and you create your own template from everything you just learned with that so what was your one thing? We would love to hear it from you. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We'd love to uh, have you back for our next workshop. And also let us know what you thought about this. What was your, uh, what was your big takeaway? Your one thing? Uh, was this something you've seen before? You know, it, all the things we would love to hear from you. Let us know in the comments. 
And if you want to know more about this thing we call the Measure Marketing Framework, you want the tool that you just saw, you can look into joining the Measurement Marketing Academy. Go to measure.tip slash get academy and see if it's right for you. So that was how to set up eyes on the journey. We'll see you next time.